I have long been troubled by the nature of the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia. And in light of the likely Saudi murder of critic Jamal Khashoggi, I think it is time for us to thoroughly reevaluate that relationship. Saudi Arabia is and has always been a despotic dictatorship in which dissent is not tolerated, in which women are treated as third class citizens, and which has spent the last several decades exporting an extreme form of Islam, Wahhabism, around the world. It is also a nation which is currently devastating the country of Yemen, one of the poorest countries in the world, in a catastrophic war with U.S. support. The Trump administration has made Saudi Arabia the cornerstone of a Middle East strategy aimed at confronting Iran. I believe that the United States must play a much more even-handed role in the region to bring some level of understanding and cooperation in that part of the world, rather than supporting conflict between the Saudis and the Iranians, a conflict which serves no one's interest except for arms manufacturers. Six billion dollars, 889 million, 63 million, and that's uh, for various artillery. We cannot have an ally who murders in cold blood in their own consulate a critic, a dissident. That is unacceptable by any government, but especially by one so closely supported by the United States. Rather than helping create deniability for the Saudi government by suggesting that rogue killers might have done it. The king firmly denied any knowledge of it. It sounded to me like maybe these could have been rogue killers. Who knows? President Trump should insist on a full investigation and pledge that those responsible will in fact be held accountable. Since March 2015, a coalition of Arab states led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have been at war in Yemen, a war which has created a humanitarian disaster in one of the region's poorest countries. Many thousands of civilians have been killed in that war. Many more have been made homeless, and Yemen is suffering right now the largest cholera epidemic in modern history. Millions are at risk of starvation, according to the United Nations Refugee Agency. Right now, some 75% of Yemenis are dependent on food aid. The UN considers it a catastrophe when 25% of a population is dependent on food aid. In Yemen, it is 75%. We are on the brink of a major famine there. Further, the United States is deeply engaged in this war. We are providing the bombs the Saudi-led coalition is using. We are refueling their planes before they drop those bombs. And we are assisting with intelligence used in choosing the targets. This war is undermining U.S. security interests, providing fertile ground for extremist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and new opportunities for Iranian intervention. Above and beyond the catastrophe that this war has created, there is the fact that U.S. engagement there has not been authorized by Congress and is therefore unconstitutional. Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution clearly states that it is the United States Congress, not the President, who has the power to declare war. Over many years, Congress has allowed that power to end. Earlier this year, along with Senators Mike Lee and Chris Murphy, I introduced Senate Joint Resolution 54, which uses 1973 War Powers Resolution to compel the Trump administration to withdraw U.S. involvement in this war. This past March, the Senate tabled this resolution by a vote of 55 to 44. This crisis has only gotten worse since then, and our complicity is even greater. Next month, when Congress reconvenes, I intend to bring this resolution back for a vote on the Senate floor to give my colleagues another opportunity to end U.S. support for this catastrophe 
to reassert congressional authority over matters of war and to show the Saudi government that they do not have a blank check from the United States to continue human rights violations. Thank you very much.